guys, so this is a Nissan Rogue transmission. It usually bolts up to a QR25DE. Uh, this is a CVT transmission. Um, it's no good, I promise you that. So we're gonna take it apart to see what's going on inside. I know a lot of people have seen the videos with the concept of what a CVT is and how it works, but we're gonna pull apart a real one so you guys can see what's going on in it. We can see where the damage was, maybe. Um, and we'll see how messy we can get in the process. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by just pulling it apart. This isn't going back together, so we're really not gonna give a shit what goes where. Um, we'll pull it apart. I'll try to explain what parts do what. If I don't understand what something is, I'm basically gonna tell you because I've never actually opened one of these up before myself. I just know the theory and the concept and basically what some of the stuff is. So let's get to it. Here's where things might start to get messy. This is the torque converter, which is typically full of fluid. Please be empty. We are empty. Avery, torque converter is empty. Can you believe that? No wonder it doesn't work, besides the fact that it's a CBT. Yeah, it is that. Torque converter, you can look them up online, learn what they do. I can't really break it apart because it's, you know, welded shut. Not with that attitude, you can't. CVT or lever. Literally, when you're in park, all this does is and it locks in to your gear, which I can show you the parking gear. So, this right here is your actual park gear. This is your park rod. So, when you shift the transmission into park, then the rod moves, as you can see. So, when that rod pushes out, it pushes on here, which then pops this end of this right here into one of these slots and that's actually what stops your car from rolling down a hill backwards and killing everybody okay so this is your cvt drive belts this is it this is the whole kit and caboodle this is the whole big deal this is everything nissan loves about these transmissions and i still don't understand why so if avery will point the camera down here we have your belt and you have your two pulleys now at this point in time, everything's sitting a little cockeyed with no pressure on it because, you know, we just beat this thing into submission. But the way it works is this pulley here, these two cones, expand and retract, and this side does the same thing. Right now this side's all the way in, this side's all the way out, more than likely because when this thing was shut off, obviously it was in park, so it's going to put it into its lowest gear ratio so the torque converter doesn't get it going. This is what makes this so hard to upgrade for you performance guys out there is it's kind of hard to upgrade past a steel and Kevlar belt. It's about as tough as the material gets unless you want to throw titanium in there. Um, the slippage occurs from fluid pressure not contracting these enough. On the back here, you'll see the fluid passageways. Comes up and then this way. And you have your valve body in the bottom which controls fluid flow to each of these giving you your gear ratio and things like that. So when you hear people say upgrade their CVT, they're not talking about upgrading this. This is just something that's not upgradable. If you look at this, this is this is pretty beefy. There's only one real way to make it. If you cryo treat it or make it harder, I don't really see any benefit in that because it's just frictional contact and making the pulley harder isn't going to give you more friction. Um, I mean, obviously, if you made it rough or gave it grooves, then you'd be pretty much setting your gears and ruining it, which is what happens here, which is why these are no good. They slip, things like that. Fluid pressure gets low. Uh, valve bodies die. Valve bodies being damaged causes um, your low fluid pressure. So that can be a problem. And your valve body is actually in here. We haven't taken it out. Because, quite frankly, it's a pain in the ass. So this is your whole valve body assembly here. Uh, so this controls your different fluids. There's actually a computer in there. There's a plug up here. Runs into a wiring harness into here. When you select your gear using this lever right here, this is your gear select, 
you'll see that it's just a rod that goes all the way down into the valve body here. You can see this moving right here. And the little rod right there. That pushes in and out and actually just changes the flow of fluid like a normal automatic transmission. So that's how you do your gear selection. And that's where the whole fluid temperature thing comes in that I've talked about in the insane juke videos. When you have your fluid pressure getting so hot, the only thing that this valve body is doing is allowing certain amounts of fluid to flow through. The passageways are only so big, the solenoids are only so big, the solenoids are only so powerful. So that torque converter is turning and giving you that fluid pressure, but when the fluid gets hot, the hydraulic fluid gets thin. Oil gets thin as it gets hot. So as it gets hot, you start losing your pressure, which means your valve body isn't pushing enough fluid through to your uh, gears here, or your, your gears, your pulleys if you would, meaning you can't squeeze them together enough, you lose friction, they slip, and that's the end of it. One slip carves a groove in these, I, I'm going to say these are made out of steel, carves grooves in them, and then that's the end of it. So, it's actually a really simple system, I can actually kind of seeing it apart understand why companies are starting to switch to this, you know, you got your Nissans, your Hondas, your Subarus, all switching to CVT. This is simple, easy to manufacture. There's not a whole lot to this, um, but I do see its weaknesses and I do see why at the Nissan dealership I work at, why we replace so many of them. The problem is with its simplicity. The cooling systems aren't sufficient for it, especially in North America where we have extreme hots and extreme colds. They kind of don't really have it set up for that hot weather. You can see the development wasn't done for that. Um, which, if you go over to Europe, most of the CVTs have an external actual cooler, like a radiator cooler, like a dedicated cooler. Um, the United States, it's not something that you typically get on them, and if you do, it's kind of a hybrid with the, with the cooling system, like your, uh, your coolant. So, that is the inside of a CVT transmission in all of its glory. <laughs> this is what gives you fluid pressure. Okay, so this spins and this spins this. So you, your torque converter spins this and spins this. This this little chain is what gives you your fluid pressure to move those pulleys. This little teeny tiny thing. The torque converter, which goes on here, which is actually driving this pulley here. <laughs> this drives direct from the torque converter to that pulley. So I understand that. So your torque converter lock is very important. We have torque and we have CVTs that come in all the time where you try to put it in gear and it just shuts off. I understand why that is though. If your torque converter goes back in one of these things, that's the end of it. Um, but it astounds me, or I should say it astounds us, that this little teeny tiny chain is all that is giving you your fluid pressure to the valve body. If you have any questions, comment below. I'll try to answer them or I'll make another video on it. But this is, this is it. I mean, it's, it's pretty much this simple. You have this is your drive gear, which is this one here. It comes out of here, there's a sprocket that sits there, which is this. It sits in there. It turns your diff, which is this. It sits like that. So your gear ratio is determined here, which turns this, which turns your wheels. So it, it is, it's very simple. I mean, Avery, you, you're kind of surprised how simple it is. There's not, nothing to it. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty. Simple. Not a lot to it. I mean, it's definitely some complexity, oh yeah, but... Well, the complexity is more in the valve passageways and how everything's programmed. Mm -hmm. Mechanically, it's, it's simple. Yeah. Hey, thanks for checking out our video. Make sure you go check out the other build videos that we have going on, and go check out our Patreon campaign. The link's right down in the description. Patreon.com slash FastReligion.